Happy July. July, 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 July. I just hmm. realized as the Gemini I am, I'm wearing a shirt that says Gemini season. Someone is uh, holding a grudge towards I'm July. a little bitter about it, but it's fine. A little bitter. What, um, how, how was, well, I was going to say, how's July going? Well, it's day one, so. I'm sure it's um, excellent. Do you have any plans this July? Anything that we're looking forward to this month besides yeah, it being coming, cancer season? I'm coming to you, obviously, as I hope you know. And that's your, and that's the best thing that's going to happen to you this month, right? Well, yeah. You know what? Actually, well, it's technically June as we record this, but you're hearing it uh, on July 1st, uh, sweet listeners. Uh, today is the first day that I ever got Leona to laugh. <gasps> you did. Wait, but, really? Yes. She's literally never enjoyed me as a person ever until today. <laughs> <laughs> she thought you were funny trying to trying to feed her a sandwich. I was trying to share a sandwich with her. That was actually a very sweet way, beginning to this friendship here. I but she, loved uh, that moment. She was so happy. We ate a little Sammy together. I was on FaceTime and I would put, shove the sandwich in the camera and say, your turn, you eat it. And she just lost her little mind. She so, thought it was um, hysterical. She had no idea what was going on, but I'm I'm glad she. But she knew it was funny. <laughs> she could. She sensed the general vibe from across the country. Yeah. <laughs> um, so July's going good for me so far. How's it going for you? It's great. I'm counting down till I get to come see you because, mm -hmm. folks, we're doing a fun little little thing um, with Parcast. Yes, we're doing a, it's like a little panel situation. Yeah, it's like a live virtual event, Parcast Presents. I'm very excited about it. Um, it's a true crime event, and Sarah Turney will be there. Um, I'm really, really excited. So basically, it's a one-night interactive experience alongside, they said great minds of true crime. That I mean, I hope they're not talking about us. I don't know that we're great minds. Um, I gotta be honest, I don't know why I'm there because I listen to you just as much as everyone else listens to you'll you. You'll be there for comic relief. <laughs> I'm gonna be the emotional support while everyone's talking about true crime and I'm like, well, if you need a ghost story, I am right here. <laughs> um, but I get to be there. I'm very honored to be there with you. It's gonna be super fun and if you want tickets, you can go to momenthouse.com slash the great minds of true crime. Uh, and we'll be there so i'm flying out to la for this i'm very excited i'm just very excited to see you i really have a personal vendetta against myself i guess and i'm desperate for this troll hole to be done in time for your your arrival because well, i really I'm, want to surprise you well i'm it. coming back in august so don't worry don't stress <sighs> it's not the same i don't want you to see it half done and then i'm see not gonna it. I don't see want you... it if i'm i'm not gonna like stay at your house so i'm not gonna see it if you don't like if i don't come over hurtful i feel like uh you should just i mean i be want like, to see but if you're like don't look at it then i'm not gonna go look at it but when you do finally look at it i want you to be like i gotta stay here i gotta In i gotta bathroom. live here oh i'm thinking of the gay bathroom again <laughs> i'm like what <laughs> i will also show you the gay bathroom but no the gay bathroom and my little troll hole i want you to look at both of them and be like this is the place for me this is where i'm moving to yeah yeah you get it you get it you get it that's okay. the energy i need you to bring when you see it for the first time okay okay um well then uh if you want to wait till august that's fine so we'll we'll see where you stand mentally and spiritually thank you it won't be well but you know <laughs> it never is <laughs> it might be a little better than normal who see who knows uh but anyway welcome to our july listeners episode if you are new here this is uh we put one out on the first of every month where you can submit your own personal true crime and paranormal stories uh sweet sweet eva usually uh, comes up with a theme behind our backs and uh then we <laughs> i don't know if there's a theme today i was not warned of anything uh I sometimes that's half the adventure trying to it, find if there's a theme and sometimes there's not not a theme and we just force the theme into the equation we or sometimes there's a theme and we just find a different theme oh we make our own theme right yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah usually we make our own theme and i will say i think maybe i'm wearing my gemini shirt subconsciously because the last month uh when it was gemini oh. season the theme was scorpios because eva thought she was doing a little silly silly little game a silly little prank that was that was evil evil eva that evil not eva, sweet, sweet eva indeed e evil yes we'll shop it um, yeah, she decided to, for our birthdays, to give us a really horrid gift, which was, uh, just <laughs> Scorpios abound, just 
ev- from every direction. Uh, so maybe this this season we'll get some redemption with a Gemini story yeah, if you've we'll manifested see. well enough. We'll see. All right. So here is our first one. This is from Alicia. I do not know Alicia's pronouns. Uh oh. That's okay. We're just gonna say Alicia. Alicia's subtitle or uh no real title is uh a very Sub- good one. Subject? Subject. Our subject subtitle. line is I don't know what's wrong with me. The subject is two lesbians and a ghost walk into a bar. Mm. Sounds fun. I love so, that one. Alicia says, Hello all, my name is Alicia. Oh, and then pronouns. Great. Finally found them. She, her, slash Scorpio. Oh, Eva, what is going on? I think this might, I think if this is the theme, it's just more Scorpios. She's, I have fear. I am frightened. She's she's doing a number on us. Uh, okay, Alicia, she, her, thank you for normalizing pronouns. Sorry, it took me forever to get there. I tend to ramble, so I'm sorry, and feel free to chop out anything irrelevant to the story. Well, Eva chose to not do that, so <laughs> congratulations. Your whole story will be here. I'm going to crack this baby open and tell you about my experience with a ghost. Six years ago, I was a month into dating a girl who lived in Wilmington, North Carolina. I lived two hours away and went to go stay with her for a few days. Wilmington has a lot of history, but at the end or but at the time I was more interested in the girl. Fair enough. Melissa took me to this bar located downtown in the early afternoon called Blue Post Billiards. To get to the bar, you have to walk through this long, eerie alleyway. Since it was in the middle of a Tuesday, we had the whole bar to ourselves. Ugh, I love when you go to a restaurant and you're the only one there. Um, I feel like I do at a bar, not necessarily at a restaurant, because I'm like, why is nobody eating here? Uh, <laughs> is well, it a bad sign? <laughs> I think that's fair, but that's only if it's a restaurant I've never been to and it's empty, oh, which sure. has happened to me. That was a rough one, and it had such good reviews. I that's was so That's what I'm upset. saying when there's nobody there and you're like, is this a bad sign? But I have go-tos in my neighborhood, and when I'm there by myself, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get top-tier top tier service. Um, so anyway, they are by themselves in this billiard hall bar. It was nice to be flirty and goofy without having to worry about what's going on around us. And fun fact, Blue Post is a location used in a lot of movies and TV shows, mm. including One Tree Hill and Tammy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Blue Post has two large rooms with pool tables, a phone, a photo booth, jukebox, arcade games, pinball machines, and seating areas. There is so much to look at, and in between the two rooms is a long and narrow hallway. We had some drinks, played pool, and decided to sit in the hallway on some sofa seats. The hallway is dark with mellow red and yellow lighting and Japanese lanterns hung from the high ceiling. We had high... We had already closed out our tab, and Melissa got up to use the bathroom before we moved on with our day. I was sitting in the hallway, distracted by my phone, and I looked up to realize that I wasn't alone. Mm. There was a man sitting. Ma- I, there was a man. Ah! There, was, <laughs> there was a man sitting maybe six feet away from me, and I thought this was a little strange because why sit so close to me in a congested area if there is literally anywhere else in the bar to sit? Oh boy. I shook the thought because I am a friendly and open person and maybe he was having a rough day and wanted to be around other folks. I asked him, how's it going? And he replied with something like, not great. I could really use a beer right about now and I don't have any money. I then noticed his raggedy clothes and judging by the way he looked, one might assume he was underprivileged or maybe unhoused. He wore a hat that I can best describe as a train conductor's hat. It was grayish and flat in top. Uh... When he, he was either wearing overalls or an outfit with straps, possibly suspenders, but I just remember trying not to let him catch me staring. He looked really depressed, and I figured if the bar let him in without buying anything, then he was harmless. I almost excitedly gave him cash to go get himself a beer until I realized that I paid for our own drinks with the cash I had. Card tabs were a $20 minimum, and we didn't spend that much, so I paid with cash and gave the rest of the cash I had to the bartender as a tip, maybe more than I should have because I wanted to impress the girl. I told him I would have given him my money if I had it. And at this point, Melissa is back and sits down next to me. The man says, yeah, yeah, you're just giving me that line. You have money, but you don't want to give it to me. He says this with anger in his voice and with severe eye contact that made me uncomfortable, but Mm -hmm. I didn't want him to think I was lying. So I pulled out my wallet and flashed it open to show him I didn't have any cash. As I did this, Melissa asked me, what are you doing? 
And I said, this guy doesn't believe that I spent all the cash we have. I wanted to buy him a beer. Melissa just stared at me puzzled and said, what guy? No. I don't like it. So, oh my God. So she didn't even, Melissa didn't even hear this guy. Talking. see this guy yeah yeah but like he said oh you're just giving me that line and melissa's like already back so like she didn't yeah. even hear Ooh. that that's freaky oh hey hello what's that i got on my arms goose, goose cam. cam um yikes and now i have to fit it figure out what is happening all over again um <laughs> okay melissa just stared at me puzzled and said what guy <laughs> i ignore what she says because the man starts wait he's still here oh he's still I, there for god's sake that's I what thought i'm he, saying like he's still there and she the, uh, melissa can't see him i mean oh my god i thought surely that uh <laughs> i thought that was when she would kind of rattle herself and the person would be gone but no no um i was wrong it's <laughs> just it just keeps happening I ignore what she says because the man starts yelling, stands up, and comes walking towards us. Everything in me screamed danger. I don't even remember what he was yelling because I was terrified. I grabbed Melissa's arm and ran like a motherfucker out of that bar. I didn't look back, but I could hear him right behind me. His voice carried through the bar and seemed to chase us out, and I'm running through downtown Wilmington as I saw a freaking, as if I saw a freaking ghost. I'm dragging, oh yeah, and I'm dragging Melissa behind me. Melissa was resisting my pull and kept saying, stop, what the hell's going on? And I wouldn't stop. She quit running and thought, okay, fine, every man for himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I ran across, I ran crossing another street without even checking to see if it was safe to cross. Don't worry, I didn't get hit by a car, but I did trip and fall in the middle of the street. <gasps> I got to remind everyone, this was this person's like first date or something or like very early on. And now this person thinks that you are talking to people who aren't there. And also while running, she probably saw you trip and fall. Just eat shit. Yeah. <laughs> Just like it gets more and more like intimately embarrassing. <sighs> <laughs> oh, I hope the two of you are like perfectly in love right now, but um. If this was your only date, it's at least a really good one. Um, okay. It falls on the street. I got back up and started running again. The only reason I stopped be was because I had no idea where I was running and I didn't know where we parked. When Melissa caught up, we went back and forth over what just happened. She swears nothing was there and I swear that he was there. She was so sure and I started to wonder if I had hallucinated. I wasn't on drugs. I didn't have much to drink and I've never hallucinated before. But why would she lie about that not happening? I go back home the next day and went to get lunch at a place I regularly went to. I sit at the bar so I could talk to my favorite bartender. I tell him how I really screwed the pooch with Melissa and she probably <laughs> thinks I'm Looney Tunes. <laughs> I go over what happened and Jerry asked me the name of the bar we went to and I told him that it was the Blue Post. He casually said, oh, well, that explains it. I used to work there and that place is haunted. <gasps> I stare at him in disbelief and he tells me how nothing major happened while he had worked there. Uh, that was worth talking about, but he said how weird things would happen while he was cleaning up the bar by himself after closing time. If I remember correctly, he mainly talked about how the TVs would turn themselves on after he would turn them off. This conversation was back in 2016, and I was so shocked. I honestly don't remember everything he told me about uh, about what he knew about the Blue Post. I found it fascinating, but I was just relieved that I wasn't crazy. And despite Melissa's friends telling her to ghost me, see what I did there, Melissa decided to keep me around and we're Yay. now married. Oh, oh, I'm so happy. She loves telling people the story and she does and she does believe what I experienced. I have nothing to gain from the story and I don't care if people don't believe me. Uh, one other thing has happened to me since but I figure this story has been long enough. I'll post the short but sweet part two later and y'all can decide if you want to share it. Thank you guys for being something I can look forward to uh, and listen to every week and shout out my best friend, Catherine, for getting me on board with the And That's Why We Drink train. Much love and happy pride, Alyssa. That's maybe the theme. No, pride. Which, hmm, maybe even maybe it's pride. I know, like like every day's pride. We're going to start July off with pride, a new pride month. <laughs> I was going to say, of course, you would do it after pride yeah. month. But that, <laughs> uh, maybe the theme is running and tripping in front of someone you have a crush on maybe it's um maybe it's train conductors because like mm -hmm. she said the train conductor guy, and then she said and that's why we drink train 
that uh, oh <laughs> so you have two points so far <laughs> in the sick game we play every month sick game we invent the sick game that only we play and everyone else has to deal with and nobody's ever had points before but now suddenly there are points so that's fun also is this it's a, i think i said Alyssa at the end but it's alicia so sorry alicia oh, you said alicia, alicia. oh okay. alicia okay perfect 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 all right, so I have a story here. This is from Brooke, she, they pronouns, and the subject is, I was in elementary school across the street when my dad had the Bayou Strangler on trial. <gasps> what the fuck? Okay. Okay, wow. So I feel like Eva read that title and went, this one's a humdinger. This Don't even have to read it. Just ring, drop ding, it ding. Ring, ding, yep. ding. Hi, Eva, M. Christine, and all partners and pets. I love the podcast and have been listening since 2018. Even saw you guys back in New Orleans. Despite having a BA in English, I can't start a story for shit, so here we go. <laughs> I'm a big-time true crime fanatic, which is in part due to the fact that my dad is a district court judge. This has been a cool feature of my growing up as my elementary school was right across the street from the courthouse in my small Louisiana hometown. This meant that throughout my childhood, I was regularly walked to and from school by police officers and judges in robes ready for the day. Oh, my God. Usually I would just sit in dad's office and play computer games until he was done for the day. Sometimes I even sat on the side of the bench and listened in on cases, making PowerPoints of evidence to show my dad later on. Okay, so Ma I feel like this is immediately the friend you wished you had yeah. um, growing up. because Oh, I wish. I so wish. One, eavesdropping. Two, town gossip. Three, PowerPoint presentations afterwards <laughs> summarizing in case you missed it. True crime. True crime. And also like would have paired very nicely with your I live in a cemetery. Come <laughs> eavesdrop here. Oh my gosh. We can go straight from the courthouse to the cemetery. Um, hey, Brooke, are you looking for a friend? Okay. I, I cool. was going to say, I feel like I, I would have like been out of a job if you met Brooke earlier. <laughs> I would have. The two of you would have done this a Brooke, long time ago. It's not ago. too late to run away together. Okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Naturally, this turned into a love of true crime. Fast forward to me doing my own research on cases, reading murder mysteries, and listening to podcasts. I came across a documentary called Bayou Blue, all about the Bayou Strangler, Ronald Joseph Dominique. He was active from 1997 to 2006 with an MO of luring men back to his trailer to assault and murder them. I was shocked to learn that he was active and ultimately tried in my hometown in front of a grand jury. Come to find out, my dad was the presiding judge and I was feet away in his office when this horrific murderer sat in front of the grand jury. Oh my gosh. Not the most exciting story, but a fun little true crime anecdote nonetheless. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of Louisiana that's more than just our disturbing paranormal activity. Regrettably, Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> regrettably oh my god by the way oh oh go ahead no do your ps first ps i'm living in colorado now and hope to catch you guys pretty soon up here well you missed us we were there a couple months ago but that's okay <laughs> but also regrettably of regrettably <laughs> um so regrettably is my new favorite way to end messages but i yeah. will say that came in perfect time because just yesterday allison sent me like an office meme which i guess we miss because we don't work in corporate uh, situations. Oh, I thought you meant um, like the show, not the show. Like no, no, no. Like like something that I a think, workplace uh, meme. Yeah, I don't know where she found it on like a PowerPoint, like a PowerPoint that her office like sent out to their client. I don't, I don't totally understand. <laughs> What's it's, happening? It's like a, it, she was working on a PowerPoint thing for her office, and there was a meme or a picture, like a graphic in the PowerPoint that like she started cackling to, and I was like what is like the cool office humor these days yeah yeah so sure. she's she sends me this picture and i don't know the right word for it but you know when there's like like lawful good neutral good chaotic good and yeah. it's like all nine of them it's it's that chart but with um with like the way that you say goodbye at the end of an email so oh. <laughs> so apparently here are just some of them lawful good is warmly uh chaotic good is cheers chaotic neutral is sent from my iphone <laughs> my neutral evil is no sign off but my personal favorite is chaotic evil which is chow chow that's good because <laughs> i thought cheers would be it but chow is even wilder i don't know where regrettably falls on that but um i think that's the new lawful good i or think something regrettably like doesn't even fall on that it just kind of is its own chart it's the trump card 
It's the trump card. Um, let me see. I thought, I think, I'm trying to find my, I swore I uh, thought I co- maybe had covered, I think I'm thinking of a different strangler. Um, Scranton Strangler, since I mentioned The Office? No. Oh. Um, I think I covered, hmm, hang on. Oh, the Taco Bell Strangler in the book um, for <laughs> for Charlotte, North Carolina. I was trying to remember. I was like, it's a southern city, and it had a strangler. Well, when um, the, Wilmington, North Carolina. Oh, that was the that last, was the last I, one. God damn. We this, are really all over the place. This one was Louisiana. But so I wanted to see if I had covered him, um, but I don't think I have. Ronald Joseph, but I know his name. So either I ha- either it was in my notes for the book. I don't think I've covered him on the podcast. So well, when you do cover it, know that our our sweet listener was like a little child and uh, Col- and playing just... pajama Sam like ten feet away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just next time, just like to give you like a like a in the eyes of a of a really true crime story hosted by Christine Schieffer. Know that one perfect. of our listeners was in the story just you'd be reporting there. on. Was there? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, um, thank you for that. Also, I I didn't even realize that. Yeah. That means that you grew up with like a bunch of murderers just sitting next to you. Only a few, like one wall away. Yeah. Ooh. I wonder if that caused a complex for you, Brooke would have caused one for me. Regrettably. Um, Regrettably Brooke. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Regrettably us. I'm going to sign everything. (laughs) Regrettably us. Well, you know, like in the Broadway show, like Dear Evan Hansen, there's the song yeah. Sincerely Me. Yeah. Like now we've now we've got the new one, Regrettably, regrettably Us. Oh. <laughs> oh, Regrettably Us is fine too. Uh, okay, here's the here's another one. This is from Sam, who's a she, her pronouns. Thank you for normalizing pronouns, Sam. And the title, or as I like to call it, the subtitle, um, <laughs> is My Family's Haunted Ass House. Nice. By the way, do we have an idea of the theme? Oh, Eva threw a curveball with that last one. I didn't see any trains in that. You know, I haven't seen any trains and I haven't seen any armchairs this episode yet. You make a good goddamn point, Christine Thank Schaefer. You. Thank you, Emothy. Uh, Eva, Evatha, we Evatha, absolutely, we, call you that? <laughs> we, lest we forget, did I or did I not demand armature uh, <laughs> as armature. the theme this year? Where or is this it? Month. Eva, I swear to God, you get one month of a grace period next. It better be Armature August next next month. You armature know what I'm saying? Armature August is coming in hot. I want arms. I want furniture. I want armature. And if I don't get that, I'm not going to be a happy little sport about it. That's the truth. And I'm going to be throwing a fit, an epic um, fit. G- here's my mind. It's going to be gone next time because I'll have lost it. Very <laughs> good. <laughs> okay. I'll help you find it. Okay. My family's haunted ass house by Sam. Hello, and that's why we drink people, fur babies, and petrified fruit family. I'd like to start off by saying this is my favorite podcast, and it makes my morning drive to work terrifying in a good way. In a good way? Okay. (laughs) So knuckle and buckle. Oh, I remember Mm. when we used to do that. Knuck and buck, right? Knuckle and buckle. White knuckle and buckle. Nobody liked it. We tried to make it a thing, and only Sam liked it. I'm still desperately trying to get armature to be a thing, and maybe that will also die, as knuckle and buckle did. Armature? I wait, wasn't it armature? It was armature last year, right? Or last month? What are you talking about? No, it was armchairs. Oh, yeah, armature. But, oh, because they said they amateur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were yeah, trying yeah, to write yeah, yeah. amateur and they wrote armchair, I think, or something. It it will have to be. I'm sticking with the armature. But yeah, knuckle and buckle falls in the same category. It's there's things I desperately want others to be okay with. And, uh, and knuckle and buckle is, I guess, just not one of them, except for Sam. Sam likes knuckle and buckle. Knuckle and buckle, y'all, because this shit is noodles all the way to the top. Yeah. My family moved into this house when I was 17, and it was kind of a big deal with my parents being divorced and us kids moving around a lot in and out of apartments. Shortly after moving in, spooky shit started happening. My stepdad is very into horror films and regularly wrote my mom into sitting through them, good and bad Mm. ones. Uh, One night, they were watching The Last Exorcism while us kids were away at my dad's. During peak spook of the movie, the hallway lights started flickering. Supremely freaked out, they tried stopping the movie, and it would not stop. Uh Uh-oh. They tried using the remote, then the buttons on the DVD player, then ejecting the movie, and nothing. The movie continued- Ejecting the movie. Good times. (laughs) Good times. VHS? Okay. (laughs) 
Uh, and then nothing. The movie continued to play and the lights continued to flicker. Mm. Then they had to unplug the TV, uh, which continued to play. Oh, no. Wait. Oh, no, no. I read the, the first line again. <laughs> <laughs> no now there's no power it's not okay anymore. <laughs> the electricity's gone okay they they had to unplug the tv to which the lights also finally stopped the dvd player had to be taken apart to get the movie out oh oh my god well i think a dvd player would have to be taken oh you can eject a dvd too i was like the dvd player couldn't get the video out anyway i'm showing Damn, my age what on earth are you talking about right now when they when they said the ejecting the movie, I thought they meant a videotape, not a DVD. Yeah, me too. But I think they meant a DVD. No, they did. Oh, and okay. my own head went different places. Oh, I see. The DVD player had to be taken apart to get the movie out, and not long after, my mom was dead asleep, and she's a heavy sleeper. Nothing can wake that woman. And when she shot awake, she shot awake to the sound of someone with heavy feet sprinting down the hall towards their bedroom. No. When all of the lights in their bedroom, when all the lights in their bedroom turned on all by themselves. No. So all, so, oh God. Okay. So you have that freaky thing with the DVD. Then you're going to bed and you wake up in the middle of the night to hearing someone bull rushing into your room while the lights in your room turn on by themselves. The fact that the lights turn on is very frightening to me. Especially when they were flickering earlier. Yeah. And like implying that, oh, your lights aren't working all the way. <laughs> And now they're really working all the way by themselves. <laughs> On a separate night, they were dead asleep when, boom, what sounded like a giant bookshelf toppling over in the living room woke them up. My stepdad, baseball bat, and dog Ringo in tow ran out to see what made this crazy ass sound and nothing was out of place. Nothing out of the ordinary. No explanation. My stepdad, thoroughly spooked, asked whoever was residing in this house to please go away. You're freaking out my wife um i think they're freaking you out stepdad no i think you're freaking around with all these horror movies stop watching horror movies i would say stop stop all all the scariness activity seemed to stop and the ghosts were like lol okay and fucked off uh <laughs> until my parents went on vacation and my brother lucas and his girlfriend bella stayed to watch the house and our pup for the week which I like that, by the way, that the ghosts were like, oh, we're freaking out your wife. Okay, we'll leave. And then the wife went on vacation and they were like, bet. They were like, <laughs> so, you didn't say anything about the dog I'm and back. the boyfriend and the. <sighs> they were in the basement watching TV when they hear the squeaky door to the garage open and slam. Rango started barking and going crazy and Lucas sprinted upstairs to see who came in. No one. Him and Ringo searched every room to find nothing. Ooh. They relaxed a little and went back downstairs. When it happened again, the loud squeaky door opened and slammed. Same as the last time, they found no one. Completely terrified, they went to bed and locked the bedroom door. And that night, while trying to sleep, they heard footsteps in the hall. What made it too fucking real is Ringo sprung up, uh, sprung his head up and began growling at the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. The footsteps sprinted right up to the bedroom and the handle to the door began to jiggle no to the bedroom no 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 lucas did the only thing he knew to do and he threw the covers over his head and tried to sleep Aww. lucas bella and ringo had heard this that was the latest and hopefully the last experience in the house and luckily i have not had an experience in the house except for that creepy feeling that someone is watching me Maybe because I moved out not long after they bought it to go to college, but it is a well-known fact in our family that this house is haunted and nothing has ever happened while all of us are there, while all of us are there together. Mm, weird. Like, like whatever it is, is targeting couples. <gasps> oh, I didn't <sighs> think of that. And, and Sam, are you single, single, I was single? Gonna, <laughs> I was going to say, I hope the ghosts think you're single. Um, <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for reading. Sorry it was so long. I hope to see y'all in my hometown of St. Louis, Missouri sometime in the future. Keep up the scaries. Love y'all. Sam, Team Wine. Oh, gosh. I don't blame you for drinking. I mean, I'm glad you haven't experienced anything. It's kind of fun to be able to share a story where, like, you weren't traumatized in the process. Everyone else was. Right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and that's why I, I, I genuinely think that's why I don't watch horror movies, because in my head, I tell myself like, oh, well, now any ghosts know I'm scared and they can mm. take advantage of that. I like I psych myself out so bad with those scary movies. I feel I feel like that makes sense a little bit of like, oh, you're giving it energy or you're conjuring yeah, you're it in some way. It. 
I definitely, I mean, it would make sense. It also just makes sense psychologically. I mean, that's why you have like bad dreams after because you're thinking right. about it. Right. But like you're definitely in a in a spookier in a spookier zone because I hung out with some friends um recently and we were just sitting there and while we were all talking and catching up, there was they were playing YouTube in the background and it was like a compilation of like unexplainable ghostly things that have happened on security cameras. Ooh. And even though we were having like a fun time, just like every time I would glance at the TV, I'd get a little creeped out. I was yeah. like, it's like, ooh, the I'm in a now I'm in the spooky zone. It's, you know, it's like in the peripheral. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. Um, that's why I don't watch scary movies, and yet I watch crime shows. And yeah, see, I would I would much rather watch a scary movie than a crime show. What's wrong with me? Okay. Um, all right, so the next one I have is from Kristen, she, her, and the subject is dead, not unfriended. Oh. Oh, boy. Okay. Hello, all. I wrote in a while ago about some personal ghost stories, but I also have an intriguing true crimey story I would like to share. However, first, I would like to point out that I just listened to episode 205, where M discusses how the Simpsons predict the future. But in that mm. episode, M predicts the future by talking about a bread shortage. Well, what? here we are potentially facing a huge wheat shortage because of the war in Ukraine. Thanks, M. Smiley face. <laughs> you are welcome. Good I, job. to be fair, didn't know what I was doing. When do we, though? You know, never, never. Anyway, my true crime story is about my childhood friend, Ashley. I met Ashley in fifth grade when she moved from California to Colorado. We quickly became best friends and her mom would watch me after school until my mom got off work and could pick me up. Our friendship was somewhat on again, off again, and we lost touch in middle school before coming friends again in high school. Ashley was always very popular and full of life. Uh Uh-oh, I don't like where this is going. Mm -mm. She radiated confidence and, as I like to say, Ashley loved herself some Ashley. (laughs) All right. I love, Did you hear I love, that? yeah. I love that she loves that for herself. Good for her. After high school, we lost touch for the most part. We ran into each other occasionally, and when we did, we would always show off pictures of, she would always show off pictures of her kids. We were friends on Facebook, and her page was filled with posts of her family. She was a huge advocate for hydrocephalus because her son was diagnosed with the condition. At our 10 year high school reunion, Ashley introduced me to her husband, Tom. He was a cop. My then boyfriend and I agreed that he gave us the creeps. Oh, no. Okay. Something seemed off, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Ashley and I exchanged contact information, and a few months later, she invited me to a New Year's Eve party at her house. I debated going, but ultimately decided it was too far away and declined the invitation. Shortly after New Year's, I noticed that Ashley was no longer in my friends list on Facebook. I assumed she was upset with me for not going to her party and unfriended me. That was honestly the sort of relationship we had all along, so I wasn't too phased by it. Two years later, I was sitting on my couch and scrolling through my phone when a text from my mom came through. Ashley was murdered. (gasps) Oh my god. Oh. I was not only taken aback by the content of the text, but also by the complete lack of emotion conveyed by my mom, who also knew Ashley. Selfishly, my first thought was, God damn it, Ashley, why did you unfriend me? I immediately went to the computer and looked her up, and there it was. She died on New Year's, the day of the party I didn't go to. Mm. Holy shit. Wow. Can you imagine the survivor's guilt? No. She didn't unfriend me. She was dead. Her death was initially ruled a suicide, but had been reopened two years later because enough evidence was found to try her husband for murder. The way the case was handled from the beginning was pitiful. The same police department her husband worked for was the one handling the case, of course. (sighs) He had scratches all over his chest that he claimed he got from shaving. The bedroom where the shooting occurred... Like on his chest. No, I know. I'm saying yeah. what? As in like, uh, uh, come again? What are you talking come about? Come again. The bedroom where the shooting occurred was in disarray as though there was a fight. And a neighbor initially testified that he heard Tom screaming, I shot my wife. I just <laughs> shot my wife. Oh, my God. Jesus. Regardless of all this, Tom was found not guilty. And her death to this day remains listed as a suicide. <sighs> wow. I, I know. Well, you know. I know how. 
Personally, I was not there that night and cannot definitively say what happened. But as someone who knew her, suicide just doesn't seem fathomable because I, as I said before, Ashley loved herself some Ashley. On that tragic note, I want to say thank you so much for your podcast. I listen while painting, while working out, and I also let it distract me when I'm supposed to be working. Love to all and take care, Kristen. Holy crap. Wow. That is heartbreaking. So basically... Go ahead. I was just going to say, so basically when when she was like, why the hell did my mom not show any emotion? But it's probably because she knew she had died Mm -hmm. two years ago, but was saying like, oh, she was murdered. She Mm -hmm. didn't die by suicide i don't know wow that's uh it's a heavy one and also it feels i feel like i can speak for probably anyone that listens to us that it feels like uh there was a cover-up involved yeah or just not even covering anything up just letting him yeah go yep scary uh and who uh, no that ashley was the other person who wrote this um no, Ashley was the friend who died. Oh, yeah. Who wrote the, the letter to us? Kristen. Okay. Thank you, Kristen, for your story. Um, also, sorry for your friend. This is from this is from Michael, who uses he, him pronouns. Thank you for normalizing pronouns, Michael. Um, let me see. I always like it when we get someone with, a, with he, him pronouns. I feel like that doesn't happen a lot, so... It, so it, it pops to the eye. So M likes you better than everyone else. I don't need to give uh, he hims any more privilege. That's than they what you're doing. Have. I don't know. You I'm just saying it. we our demographic. It's it's hard. It's not often we come uh, come across a he him. It's so. true. It's true. Uh, this subject is a a short ghost story and an abridged murder. Mm? Abridged murder. Ab- abridged like no a i know, so, I oh. know. <laughs> it's a abridged murder cool. imagine it, if the abridged murder is on a bridge that's what i i realized that i said abridged murder out loud it sounded like i was saying abridged murder anyway yeah okay. well, <laughs> I got, you know I what follow. if the if there is a bridge in this you're gonna be really excited so be my new point system i get one point for the bridge <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I've given up on the theme the of theme whatever is this is. The goner. theme is confusion, and I have it. So, okay. Hello, Em and Christine. My name is Michael, and I am a new listener as of summer 22. Oh! Whoa, so you're like a hot few days in. And technically, summer started two days ago as we were going. <laughs> I mean, oh I gosh. assume they're I'm assuming saying like summertime, but still. If Michael is listening chronologically, um, Michael's going to have to listen and then find out, like, in five years that we've read his letter yeah. after, like, two days of sending it in. After two days. And also, he probably doesn't even know your pronouns yet. Oh. <laughs> Since this early on. What a silly time this is for you, Michael. Well, and maybe not, because if he's, like, sending his pronoun, well, I guess we do ask for them in the thing. Anyway. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know. Michael, let us know what year it is when you hear us talking to you right now. Okay. Very okay. fun. Um, all right. So I am a new listener as of summer 22, but I have been devouring your episodes. Aww. Wow. That's so nice. I've listened to two listener episodes, the first and the most recent. Oh, okay. so maybe he will catch it. A little book ending. Uh-huh. Um, and when I remembered, I have two stories. Uh, when I remembered, I have two stories to share with you. So here we go. The first story is a quick ghost story. When I was 12, my family and I lived in Asheville, North Carolina. Our house was small but comfortable for our four-person household. And in addition, there were a couple other small cottages close by that became a mini community for us. Mm -hmm. Setting the set, here's the ghost stuff. Both of my moms and I are sensitive in different ways. Well, one night my moms woke up to the landline beside their bed ringing like crazy and the Mm. lights on the cordless set going haywire and making noises neither of them had ever heard before. Cut to some time later, one of them woke up and at the foot of the bed staring at them was a ghostly woman wearing a dress. No. If memory serves, they tried talking to her but got no reply. What do you even say? What did your mom go say? Away. Like, yeah, like, I would what say, are you doing what here? Do you want? Go away. I don't know. I'd be like, please leave us. Please leave us. You're in the wrong house. It's, you it's, do not you come back go, here. Next, go to that cottage over there. They, yeah. They're expecting you. <laughs> yeah. They were, uh, they were not nice to me last week. So please just go take a step over there. Yeah. 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 They, uh, they still have my casserole dish and I would <laughs> really like it back. Thank you. <laughs> 
Lastly, in the spring and summertime, I helped the older woman next door with her gardening. I don't know what called me to do so, but in the back of her garden, between our two cottages, was an overgrowth of some creeping ivy. So I went to clear it away, and underneath was a tombstone laid on its back. I set it upright and told the neighbor that uh, what I had found. She told me that back in the day, they had used to bury their loved ones out behind their houses. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Anyways, after finding that, we didn't have another ghostly encounter in that house. And that's the that's the first story. Oh, so maybe it's like, oh, you fixed the the grave and the woman was finally at peace. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I see. I see. Like I you see. fixed her tombstone. Uh-huh. You, you helped her move on or cross over. And now she stops calling the landline all the time in the middle of the night. <laughs> she stops uh, staying in your home, but also you don't get your cash oil dishes back. That's so. true. Here's the second story from Michael. I'm going to keep this brief-ish, but if you're interested in more, all court documents and findings are available. Mm. After living in North Carolina, we moved back to Yale, Michigan, a small town with not a lot going on except that they borrowed both the school colors and mascot from the actual Yale. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Why not? I love it. It's just like it's already built in. It's already got a a reputation. Might as well just (laughs) stick with it. One day, my senior year of high school, my brother and I received a phone call from the school on an automated system. From Yale? That's- no, from school. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. I thought, he, I thought he literally meant from Yale being like, stop doing that. <laughs> anyway, I got a call from Yale and they <laughs> said like, they want their mascot nice. back. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so stupid. Okay. Sorry. I was really in the wrong head space there. Someone used that sometime. What's the Yale, what's the Yale mascot? It's a bulldog. Okay, next time someone approaches a bulldog in Yale, Michigan, be like, Yale called. They want their mascot back. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Good one. (laughs) Nailed it. Nailed it. Um, Okay, so one day at my senior year of high school, my brother and I received a phone call from our school in Yale, Michigan on an automated (laughs) system stating that school was canceled for the day. And we found this extremely weird as it was fall and it was uh, either late September or early October. And we knew there was no snow outside. Not shortly afterward, one of my best friends texts me saying Tia Skinner's dad (gasps) is dead. He was stabbed to death (gasps) and her mom is in critical care. Oh my God. Oh no. Tia was also one of my best friends from sophomore year through this point in high school. Everyone was shocked. Her family was really nice. Her mom was a teacher and everyone knew them as investigations went underway. And as things became clearer and clearer, it turns out that Tia had actually planned the murder. (gasps) What the fuck? So now one of your best friends planned a murder. Yeah, exactly. That's even worse. Oh my God. She coordinated with her boyfriend and one of her friends, promising them all kinds of things and threatening the friend's child. (gasps) Jesus. She drew them a map of the house, pointing to a window for them to climb in, and she would unlock for them (gasps) where she and her brother would be at the time. She and her brother would be in at the time. So wait, both of the kids plotted this. Or maybe the brother was just in the... I don't know. Was he part of the attack? Like maybe he was attacked? Or was it just the parents? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Uh, she drew a map of the house pointing at the window where her and her brother would be and where her parents' room was so that they could kill them. <gasps> because the fuck? Because Tia was my friend, local police interviewed and questioned me and I went to see the court proceedings with another mutual friend. Oh my gosh, Tia had no remorse and admitted to planning the murder. And once she was sentenced, she called me a few times from prison and we (gasps) chatted until one time she called saying she would send me a letter that was for her then boyfriend, the one who carried out the murder. Oh, fuck no. And she wanted me to forward it to him in prison as they couldn't communicate to each other directly. No. After that, I never spoke to her again. And Good in college, job. boundaries. Uh huh. Boundaries. Ugh, gorgeous, gorgeous girls. Gorgeous, gorgeous Michael. We're setting boundaries. Okay. Setting boundaries. Um, in college, about three years later, I got a phone call from a reporter who was doing a TV series on small town murders. I can't remember which show now, but I didn't really feel comfortable with it, so I never followed through. But not long after, Tia was up for parole for good behavior. Mm. I stopped following things after that and haven't thought about it until writing this letter. Again, good for your boundaries, Michael. Yes, seriously. You are doing a good job. I can learn a thing or two from you. 
Thanks for taking the time to read my stories. Keep up the great content. I'm just going to be sad when I'm fully caught up. All the best. Oh, don't worry. Aww. There's so much of it. You're probably going to get sick of us before you get caught up. Michael, I'm so glad that you like the show. And also, I'm so glad that you have healthy boundaries. And because I'm so I, I don't know. happy for you and jealous also, a little bit. Also, I'm so, so sorry that your best friend's a literal murderer. That's um, terrifying. Um, with zero remorse. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. I can't imagine where... I, I I would I really am just fascinated by what what the what the what the psychology of that looks like of like I feel like there's some version of a, a guilt complex of like looking back and wondering if you if you could have stopped it or if like, I mean not well, hopefully not because Michael has really good boundaries so he's probably not <laughs> that's something we maybe do. Michael it sounds like you're not one to spiral like I am but I yeah. surely I I really hope your mental health is doing okay because I would have been questioning everything for a long time and I hope that Jeez. didn't happen to you I hope the mom survived I hope the mom survived too it's very scary um, but thank you, Michael, for your story. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you for sharing that. That was like two a, a ghost and a crime in one. Yeah. I feel was. like Michael gets it. Like he showed up to the podcast and was like, <laughs> step aside. Michael showed up, came in hot, came in real hot of like, oh, yeah. I just started your show. Um, now I will be telling you all of my stories. Wait till he finds out about the armchair theme. He probably has one of those too. Michael, I know you've got yourself a little armature in that sleeve of yours. You're, I'm excited for that armature story of yours, Michael. Uh, <laughs> um armature is like a word though that's why i feel like i know it's a word what I, is it what does it mean is it like a construction thing oh geez this is so boring it's electrical engineering oh i don't Michael, want that are theme. you an electrical engineer <laughs> i don't want that theme i want armchair i want when i say armature i mean a chair made of arms and that's what it. no i don't want sorry that. sorry i meant an arm made of chairs I don't know. You do whatever you want. Stop with that it. No, I want armchairs. Don't listen to M. <laughs> M's like throwing bombs in my little. Anything's possible idea. except electrical engineering. Please don't, don't give me that. I don't want that. Stop it. Okay. So this last email is from Brie. That's one of my favorite names ever. Um, Brie, she, her. And the subject is a haunted bookstore in Tip City, Ohio. I know Tip City. Um, do you have any good stories from Tip City? No, my brother does, though. He went there a few times with his friends and they did. They just explored. Uh, I know there was like a someone would. I'm, I'm scared to say because I don't know if it was like a real thing, but people would be like, "Tip City, bitch, tip, tip City." Oh, like Rack City, <laughs> like but they called Tip City. City. But they called Tip City. But I don't know if that was just my brother and his friends, or if that was like a <laughs> YouTube video or something. I don't well, know. If it, if it wasn't something, you've officially started it. Brie, I'm sorry. I like every time someone says they're from Tip City, I just go Tip City, <laughs> like in my head. <laughs> um. Anyway. So here we go. It says, hi, Eva, M. Christine, and the rest of the, and that's why we drink crew. If you guys ever make your way north of Cincinnati, you should stop in Tip City. We have a small historic downtown area with lots of cute and spooky stops. We have an old opera house that just opened up for tour. Okay. I want to go here now, Em. I've never been. We should drive You want to go to Tip, Tip City, bitch. Tip, I'm going to play City, that bitch. song. Not even the original. Like I'm going to play the YouTube video or whatever the whole time time we're driving there that sounds fun um it sounds cool we have an old opera house that just opened up for tours and an old bookstore run by a local paranormal group hmm. i've heard stories about browse a while books when i was younger but never actually experienced anything myself i've been on a ghost tour with a local paranormal group who walked us around town told us some of the history and showed us some of the evidence they had caught there is said to be a portal in the basement of the bookstore, and they also buy and collect haunted books, which I'm sure only adds to what's going on there. They were also featured on Ghost Hunters. That's pretty cool. Also, somebody at the um, book signing um, g gave us candles from their candle shop in Tip City. I'll, I'll find it later. Ugh, I remember those candles. They smelled so goddamn good. Yeah. Um, I was like huffing it on the way home. What? Yeah. There was uh, there was one that was like named Zach Bagans or something. Yeah. Yeah. I just found it in Blaze's trunk because um, we left all the shit in his trunk. And he was like, can you please get all that stuff out? Uh, please send me if you don't want your Zach Bagans no candle. No way. I will you take had your chance to take it home and you left it in the car. <sighs> That's not my problem. I had to get on a plane. I had to get on a plane. But I also I... had to carry it all into the house yesterday. And it was delicate uh, items. I had to be very careful because there's also that live, laugh, lurk um, canvas 
such good there was so much good stuff i had to be very very uh, cautious eventually you and i are gonna have to have our own um uh i don't know what it what it, we would call it but i've got so much stuff at the and that's how you drink apartment for you and i feel like there's things that you have at your house for me and we need to do yeah. like a swap a swap meet. oh my god a swap me how fun would that be though and that would be really fun let's do a swap meet i love that idea except then we're gonna just sit there and be like I don't well know. We're just gonna i was s- well i was just at the and that's why drink apartment i was looking around and i was like there's all this stuff that like I really should just send Christine because like it's definitely meant for you. And, yeah, like, I found my Zofran, like my um <laughs> I found your medication. <laughs> you found uh, my anti nausea medication. <laughs> I was just like, man, like we really should do our own ATWD swap meet because there's like I know there's fan art that I've left at uh at your place and there's fan art here for you that has just never gotten to you. So yeah. I, we definitely this- need to do a, a little a little mixeroony. Yeah, I agree. Um, because there are some that like are very obviously one or the other that aren't really mm-hmm. like easily I don't know. Like I would split. definitely appreciate it more than you would appreciate right, it. Right, exactly, so exactly. Give it to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> then don't leave it in my car, I guess. Fair enough. Um, okay. I I feel bad I can't think of the candle name. I le- I actually meant to bring it upstairs, but I'm gonna um after the one from Eva is done, I'm gonna light the Tip City candle. Hello, fresh future Christine here. I just wanted to pop in and say that I finally found the name of the candle company. I'm so mad I couldn't remember it. They are called Lavender Amethyst Co. And you can find them at lavenderamethystco.com. Anyway, sorry, we're back to this. So sorry, Brie, for the tangent. Okay, so this bookstore has a portal in the basement. They collect haunted books and they were featured on Ghost Hunters. Several years ago, my aunt had gone there looking for a book for her son for school. <laughs> what book could that be? Sorry, side note. <laughs> that sounds, it's Benicula or something, yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah, it's gotta yeah. be. That's a good one. Several years ago, my aunt had gone there looking for a book for her son for school, and she had brought her youngest son with her. She had stopped at the counter to ask the worker for help finding a specific book. When she turned around to go to the aisle she was pointing towards, she noticed her son wasn't beside her anymore. Mind you, he was maybe six at the time, old enough to know not to wander off. She freaked out, and the lady at the counter helped her look for him. It's a pretty small store with maybe two small rooms off the main floor and stairs in the back that lead to the basement. Oh, my God. After maybe 30 minutes of searching for him? Jesus. Oh, I would assume your crap out of me. I would assume your kid isn't even at the store anymore. Like, yeah, I'd be so I'd be like, my child has gone on the highway. He's been abducted or something. Yeah, it's very scary. After maybe 30 minutes searching for him, they found him downstairs in the basement, staring at the open doorway to an empty closet Ah! where the portal was said to be. Ah! I gotta be honest. No. (laughs) It's a firm no. (laughs) Needless to say, she hasn't stepped back in that building since. I wouldn't either. Okay. Me either. Absolutely not. From now on, if Leona just stares at something for a little too long, get rid of it. Just get rid of it. Get rid of the it. Ceiling, the ceiling? The ceiling See is gone. <laughs> no more. You're staring at M? Bye. Bye, M. Get out of here. That's easy. I just hang up the FaceTime. Oh, okay. That's easy. I hang up the FaceTime. Well, for, okay. For <laughs> and I just keep eating my sandwich. <laughs> Unfortunately, the building caught fire a few years ago due to old faulty electrical wiring, and they have had to do quite a bit of remodeling since then. I believe the store mostly had water damage, so they didn't lose any of their haunted books. If you need another reason to visit, another spooky building is being renovated for a pizzeria slash arcade. Oh, mm. and we gotta go. Thanks for taking the time to read this. I enjoy my Sundays listening to you both. Also hope you like the can Oh my god. Also hope you like the candles we gave you at the book signing. I'm Wait, so this stupid. is literally yeah. Bree's literally the <laughs> I knew of, why would we, familiar. Why on earth would we think two people from Tip City came to know. the same book well, signing? Well, no, she didn't say <laughs> she was at the book signing. But the I know, but like Oh, I well, no, but the candles were from Tip City and they yeah, were at the book yeah. signing. They were at the book signing, but I didn't know that. Like, Brie never said until the end, like, that she came to our book signing. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so weird. man. Wow. Look at you, Brie. <sighs> well, I hope you liked all of the talk about your candles earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I wonder if they're her candle or if, like, she bought them there at the. I wonder. Oh, I don't no, remember. I feel like. They I ma- feel like I think some- they made them. I think they made them too. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll make sure and get. Because why else would there be a Zach Bagans candle? Okay. Bree, you make a mean candle. I gotta be honest. Um, if you live in Tip City, I don't know. 
look at every candle shop until you find someone there named Brie who has a Zach Bagans candle <laughs> and then you've found the right place and then buy all of the candles at that store please because they smelled very good I'm so annoyed I can't find it online I'm gonna have to uh have to she's too humble to not tell us the name of it you know yeah, I would really appreciate it if you gave us that gave yourself a little shout out there, Brie, because we'd like to give you a shout out too. Um, wow, man, hi Brie. They, I guess you didn't get enough of us at that book signing then. <laughs> you were like, it's time to be heard as well uh, yeah. via email. Oh well, very fun. Now I've got two reasons to go to Tip City: Brie <laughs> candles, got it, and also for this pizzeria arcade Haunted situation. Haunted bookstore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll do it. I would like to take Leona to that bookstore so she can maybe stare at the portal and let us know. No, thank you. How involved she wants to be on the other side, you know? I, I guess I'll be at the um I'll be at the uh the pizzeria slash arcade. You guys can go look at whatever. Yeah, we'll have a little date. That'd be fun. <laughs> I just bring her to the bookstore and we just see I'll just follow her eye line wherever she goes. I'll oh, just walk God. her that direction. Yeah, it yeah. It seems yeah. dangerous. Oh, by the way, speaking of spooky things, um, one of the places, I think I told you this already, one of the places that Allison took me for my birthday was Monster Palooza. Did I tell you about this? Oh, wait, maybe? It was like a monster convention that was literally here on my birthday. Oh, it was how very cool. A monster very convenient. convention. Yeah. Allison was trying to find things to do on my actual birthday, and then she found a food festival in Monster Palooza that were walking distance from each other. <laughs> <laughs> done She'd and really- done. I think she took one look at that and went, well, I can close the laptop now. <laughs> that um, was easy. But at Monster Palooza, I bought, a, obviously, the tchotchke extraordinaire. <laughs> uh, I bought quite quite a lot of tchotchkes. What'd you find? I got a little 3D printed squonk. <gasps> you got a squonk! He's a little squonky. Look at him. I don't What's know if his you can name? Tell. He's crying because he's oh, so ugly. Of course, just like me. He looks distraught. Like he's like, Ugh. I know. He looks uh, the folds on his skin alone are troubling. He there are all the little warts and the little puddles that he disintegrates into and stuff, and his little oh wrinkles on his my back. God, he's a little cutie pie. And I love um, him. I love him too. I thought about giving him to you as a present, but then I oh shit. Well, oh clonk. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about giving him to you as a present, and I was like, I love him too much. Yeah, so. I, I can tell you're attached as you hurl him into the floor. But if I find a second one, we're about to have a set of twinsies, and no, you have one, I have that. one, and then they're like parent trap locket, like the little heart Aww. locket. But we both have a squonk. I love that. <sighs> anyway, uh, that was how I wanted to end it. I saw the squonk on the table, and I was like, I know exactly the way I'm going to exit this episode. I'm going to throw it on the floor. That in was front of everybody. That was improv from the squonk. Oh, that, that was part not wasn't me. It. Okay, got it. That one planned. He heard about Tip City and he was like, I gotta go. He's like, I'm heading over there. I'm going to the (laughs) portal. Roll out. We gotta go. (laughs) I can't. I I promise. I don't want um, Brie to feel all distraught. I'm going to bring up the candle in the next episode. Okay. Like the real, the next real episode. Fun. Okay. Okay. I was just thinking, I I paused because in my own head, I was like, I got to figure out how to get you to ship me one but i i was trying to think when the next time i'm seeing you is and just keep it there and i'll bring it back with me i just forgot it because airplanes but anyway i don't know because also i should take a picture and send it to you the trunk of the car is filled with all the post-it notes that you for some reason crumpled up and saved of all um 160 names of all the books and blaze yeah i was keeping them all in a cup (laughs) yeah yeah blaze made me go in and um take every single little one out of there so thank you for that so i'm keeping the candle as a prize i like to think that when i'm not around you just do nothing but fucking hate me until the next I time you have clean to see up me after you but then you clean up after me most often so i feel like i can't really be mad you know i do clean up when i was at the and that's why i drink apartment because obviously my internet was out um uh Allison was working in the main room so I had to like keep myself occupied in the bedroom area and so I just like scrubbed and scrubbed the whole bathroom so when you get there it's gonna look very squeaky clean all for nice. you nice I can't wait You're welcome Yay. Uh, anyway I can't wait to see you uh, when this comes out you will be here in like the next two weeks yes t minus 12 days which also, since there's only two weeks left, we'll give you, we'll bookend it with the same announcement we did earlier. Uh, hopefully, you can attend our Parcast uh, panel, and uh, we'll do you see you remember there. the name of it? Um, the website? Uh, do you remember the website? No, but I okay. know that we've 
Here it is. I got it. Okay. So if you want tickets, go to momenthouse.com slash the great minds of true crime. Plus M. Schultz. And, uh, and M's there too. <laughs> I don't, I am just lucky to be there, honestly, folks. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, see y'all then. I'll, and if you only are a fan of our listeners' episodes, then I guess I'll see you for Armature August, folks. Yeah, I can't wait for that. See you then. And that's why we drink. <laughs>